Okay, I guess we are live. <clears throat> Hello, everyone. Uh, myself, Rahul Savant. Uh, and uh, today in this session of uh, Ask Dr. Anything, uh, the session conducted by WeTogether.care, uh, we have Dr. Amrita Basu, who is an ENT specialist and has a great work towards uh, kidney patient as well as in her own specialty. So I would love to quickly introduce Dr. Amrita Basu. Uh, Dr. Amrita Basu is an ENT surgeon. She has more than 13 years of clinical experience and 11 years of medical teaching experience at various medical colleges. A uh, graduate of the premier Calcutta Medical College. She completed her post-graduation in ENT and head neck surgery from the esteemed Safdar Jang Hospital. She has worked at Malda Medical College as a medical teacher and is passionate about holistic medical education. Dr. Basu believes in prevention. Uh, that's a wonderful thing and timely intervention being the cornerstone of, uh, cornerstone of good health. In her clinical practice, she shares educational resources to help her patients work better at managing their health, uh, any healthcare challenges, uh, basically. She shares her knowledge and experience uh, through her website, podcast, and YouTube channels. You can definitely uh, find more about her on the internet. We are blessed to have you, ma'am, today Thank in so this much. session. And, uh, Thank you so much. Uh, <clears throat> I must tell you that a lot of people, uh, uh, those who suffer uh, are suffering from uh, chronic kidney disease uh, have a lot of queries, a lot of questions around, uh, you know, ENT related uh, area, right? And they would want to know because uh, in their uh, condition, uh, they come across a lot of other issues, health issues, out of which uh, specifically, if you look in current situation, pandemic situation, right. ENT is something which uh, a normal issue can be uh, confused. Every people can get yes. confused with what exactly it could be and uh, any ckd patient would want to take more care you know about their health as compared to normal uh, healthy person uh, obviously because there is a compromised uh, you know immunity there is a lot more care that they are supposed to take so uh, to start with would you like to give some idea about any relation that is there or what sort of things uh, ENT and CKD, you've seen in the past in your practice, you've been writing about it. So what, what would you like to uh, say, ma'am? Actually, chronic kidney disease is one of the non-communicable diseases, uh, which is behind uh, a lot of morbidities. And uh, with CKD comes morbidities like hypertension and diabetes almost hand in hand. Most mm. patients with ENT trouble and CKD generally also have those two comorbidities <coughs> like hypertension mm. and diabetes because that those two i think uh, uh, approximately 40 to 60 percent of ckd patients in india True. have hypertension and diabetes so when they right. have all these three together their risk for having say a uh, hearing loss uh vertigo sinusitis you know various infections uh, fungal infections like one was very popular a few days back due to covid mucomycosis mm. these are all very common in patients who have immunity depressed mm. and in certain conditions of ckd certain medicine medicines are given for which again you know there could be problems so it's a complicated issue and uh, for ckd patients the disease can cause worsening of the problem and the mm. treatment can also add to the problem so you need to primarily prevent hypertension, diabetes, and obviously, as far as possible, not have CKD at all. Have a good mm -hmm. kidney health. In case yep. somebody does develop it, then they have mm. to be monitored, you know, at least mm. annual or six monthly monitoring of their hearing and other symptoms as they come. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's, that's, that's an interesting, good. yeah, yeah, that's interesting question. So, but do you is there any guideline as such which talks about people if they are suffering if they are like ckd chronic kidney disease uh you like you said six months is a period so what exactly are they supposed to do uh like every yeah. six months they should go to a ent specialist and get Not some really. checkup done no, no. or no when okay. if they have to monitor their you know the monitor. uh yeah the serum uric acid you know uh okay. so, sorry the serum urea and the serum creatinine that creatinine, has to be monitored yeah. Yeah, yeah, urea and creatinine both have to be monitored for CKD patients. Yeah. Obviously, they have to be yeah. monitored. And when yeah. the urea level, you know, increases and there's a problem, 
the kidney uh, ecosystem is similar to the hearing ecosystem in our cochlea that is mm. the inner uh, part of our ear where there is a hearing mm. hair cells mm. so what mm. happens is people who have ckd they have a disturbance in that mm. okay mm -hmm. so the ionic balance is destroyed like you know and the urea itself is a toxin to the mm. inner ear cells like alcohol oh. is a toxin like you know yeah. people who have too much alcohol they mm. they start having reeling sensation and they can mm. have ear ringing sensation that is called tinnitus mm. same thing can happen in patients who are very hypertensive so when mm. somebody has hypertension diabetes and ckd mm. they are mm. at triple risk of having hearing problem mm. Mm. because our cochlea is a very sensitive area where there are you know small hair cells which gives electrical mm. signals to our brain so that we can hear mm. so once that signaling is stopped you have hearing loss the hearing mm -hmm. loss can be temporary but more often it is permanent mm -hmm. so what happens is somebody with ckd usually will end up having bilaterally symmetrical hearing loss so if mm -hmm. you monitor it from early on and have good control of your you know blood parameters your electrolytes mm -hmm. the buc everything is properly monitored you go for your regular checkup then mm -hmm. you should have less chance of having these problem okay okay so having uh, i mean maintaining their kidney health itself is going to be helpful in yes, dealing with very. issues that are related to ent yeah. so that's what you are saying okay yeah. uh, is are there any symptoms that these people might experience for which uh, you know which which is sort of an alarm or alert for ckd patients to kind of seek ent help or something like that upon yes. something Yep. Uh, they can have sudden ringing in the ear. You know, there is a pee mm. noise, or there might be something mm. like a truck moving, or mm. uh, they are hearing a sound, but they are not mm. able to understand what is being said. You know, mm. like the noise is coming, but the voice is not clear. So that's mm -hmm. significant for sensory neural hearing loss. That is the nerves mm. are being affected at the cochlear level. And mm. uh, that characterizes sudden hearing loss also. So you have to get checked. that is primarily very important and people who are undergoing dialysis they need to get a audiometry done before the dialysis and after the dialysis because that can also affect the uh, what shall i say the ionic equilibrium of the cochlea you know how much of which ion goes in and which ion comes out so mm -hmm. it is as i told you the disease can cause problem during the treatment there might be problem so the monitoring mm. is needed Mm. and the doctor will tell you you know like mm. uh, there's a drug uh, it's called a loop diuretic uh, mm. prosamide and certain other drugs which can increase mm. the autotoxic effect of mm -hmm. the other toxins in our system okay so yes. antibiotics like uh, say streptomycin neomycin gentamicin these can all have effect on the hearing so generally we are not supposed to give uh, uh, two autotoxic drugs together because mm. sometimes uh, for kidney patients these drugs could be life saving in very severe mm. infection okay in tuberculosis mm. sometimes you might have to give some drugs which can be life saving in certain malignancies okay so mm. uh, those at those times your doctor will actually explain to you that you might have hearing problems and the mm. problem might start during the medication or maybe even a few months later mm. so that's that's something you have to keep in mind okay okay interesting so say when you said about dialysis people should be doing audiometry but the point is that like the people who are doing twice thrice dialysis in a week so it's very difficult practically very isn't difficult. it i mean yeah. because this i don't know even if there is any provision uh, with dialysis centers no. or somewhere where they would have even going to check all of this no, so there's no way because, that no because already the patient who have ckd they are suffering from so many things mm. uh, hearing is the last thing Here on their mind mm. yeah yeah they don't think but the problem is uh, it can be really bad because once mm. it uh, affects the balance system also it will be difficult for them to move also okay so, okay you know okay. Uh, the balance yeah. and hearing they kind of go hand in hand the things which are causing disturbance in your hearing they can cause uh, movement disorders also Okay. Balance is on. Okay. okay. So here's another question, actually, which is coming related to uh, kids, actually. 
so chronic kidney disease the kids that are suffering so uh, what would you like to like uh, say about that because is this hearing specific hearing issue pretty more in case of uh, kids who are suffering from uh, chronic kidney disease uh, what shall i say it's actually very sad when kids have these kind of diseases because uh, yeah. well, the thing is kids and adults when the duration of disease goes a certain way the hearing effect is similar like mm. in adults the ratio and in kids i have not seen any kids with ckd and hearing loss maybe as i told you that's the last thing on the parents mind or anybody's mind when something like this happens so mm. there are cases uh, uh, in literature but i have not mm. personally faced but uh, mm. it could happen and um, they have to be tested accordingly and there is actually mm. uh, you do have a window of opportunity if there is a sudden hearing loss uh, steroids mm. help sometimes there are mm. steroids injected in the ear which can also help mm. there and hearing aids are a very big part of uh, mm. rehabilitation in these patients because earlier mm. you use a hearing aid when there is a hearing loss there's less chance of progressive damage obviously mm. you have to keep the ckd in check like you know all your parameters that's very important mm. okay interesting yeah so uh, another thing that is mostly asked by ckd patients sometimes i don't know how this goes but uh, infections you know specifically a normal people having infection uh, whether it is throat infection ear infection or more towards i'm talking about ent uh, and recurring ones especially are they some way contribute uh, uh, you know patient eventually a normal human being uh, turning towards ckd uh, with maybe heavy dosages i don't know what probably yeah, because some of the people yeah, yeah. Uh, there's something called post streptococcal glomerulonephritis and oh, yeah. uh, repeated skin, skin infections can cause uh, certain kidney diseases also okay there is some oh, antibody okay. antigen yeah there is antigen antibody immune uh, related uh, reactions which can cause mm -hmm. kidney problems later also mm -hmm. because ultimately mm -hmm. all our systems are related that's what you have to mm -hmm. understand and systemic diseases like you know like ckd affects all the systems like you can't mm -hmm. escape from the effect of it because the kidney has a very important function of uh, you know they clear mm -hmm. the toxins from our body if they can't clear the toxins from our body it's in the blood and those toxins mm. transfer inside your all your cells and they are poisoning them from inside out so mm. you know it's a problem oh okay so people normal healthy uh, people who are at least not diagnosed with anything uh, in case of some uh, you know ent or throat issues uh, recurring ones especially so you suggest that they should be taking care so that it has to be you know so that it doesn't eventually yeah. lead into anything chronic yeah everything you know, has to be you know th yeah the rule is if you are not getting better within say 48 hours with whatever symptom you have it's better to mm. have a consultation yeah in case you are okay with trying it out for 7 days that's also okay mm. but you should mm. not delay it beyond 2 weeks anything beyond 2 mm. weeks even a cough yeah. beyond 2 weeks you have to get tested for tuberculosis so hmm. you know that's how serious things are okay now coming to thyroid actually you know that's another thing a lot of people uh, have questions on and they want to know how thyroid and uh, probably ckd uh, is interconnected or are they connected and what in case of people who have who suffer uh, with some thyroid disorders issues uh, should take care uh see if somebody with ckd has a thyroid problem pre existing or newly diagnosed mm. they will need mm. a, a opinion of a say super specialist endocrinologist because they have a very yeah. complicated turn of events they have subclinical hypothyroidism because what happens is thyroid hormone affects our entire body okay from mm. our brain to the last cell so mm. the kidney kind of delays the metabolism of everything like you know when the kidney is affected the glomerular filtration rate is mm. reduced yeah. in ckd patients mm. so what happens mm. is there is a aberration in the hormone levels 
and they mm. actually have hypothyroid but they are not they are not properly diagnosed because they might have normal certain thyroid hormone levels so mm. they have to be actually uh, be under a supervision of a specialist who you know who has ideas about that because ent surgeon is not going to manage somebody like that we Correct. manage only we manage things which we have to operate on the mm. only hormonal parts and somebody who has multiple metabolic problem will be managed by a endocrinologist who is going to also check his pituitary hormones say other problems because it's a you know there is a loop of feedback like when you have a certain hormonal level in your body your brain will not produce more of that hormone mm. but in ckd patients since your blood has a particular level of hormone but it is not being metabolized and not being used so you will have mm. hypothyroidism but your brain will think oh no this patient is fine mm. so mm. that's it's called subclinical or hidden hypothyroidism so they have mm. to be you know they should not uh, shop around for doctors they should ask for a good endocrinologist so that they are properly monitored regularly monitored according to symptoms because the thyroid can mm. derail everything it can mm. be a problem okay okay so anything that you would like to uh, talk about hearing aids actually you know where yeah. uh, so as so maybe more in case somebody just... yeah yeah please yeah. go on sorry I, no no you please uh, say please follow yeah so i said that in case of hearing aids uh, you know that are essential uh, until and unless because what we've also heard from the patient is that hearing uh, issues are not uh realized immediately that's over a period okay. of time you know uh, i mean nobody realizes that unlike i guess uh vision which is very yeah. uh clear for easy people to understand. To, easy to understand for uh the self to diagnose kind of a thing right yeah. uh hearing is not uh as easy as what it is with the vision you so, are right yeah so eventually with people probably who pro uh, realize or even they don't realize so hearing it play some important role out there so yeah. what would you say on that uh you have a interesting question uh, sometime back you told me that dialysis patient they don't even know that yeah. they need their audiometry done mm. so i'll give mm. you a clue who has mm. an app where you can check your hearing online okay oh, oh okay, uh, so, okay that's interesting it's, you can search for it on google play you can also okay. have online hearing tests for done for free so these are actually oh. not very accurate also but huh. they act as a screening tool like you know you are having a very yeah, bad yeah. score so once Got you it. get a very very bad score then you can obviously understand that yeah i need to visit a doctor okay mm -hmm. but and you can always compare that score with somebody at your home who doesn't have the same problem okay so if you have mm -hmm. to do it repeatedly that's the mm -hmm. kind of screening that will help so mm -hmm. with uh, the who app also you will see it has only a 3.5 or some score because i did it for myself and i got uh you know i got you might have mild hearing loss type of a so don't get scared if you get that i don't have hearing loss okay. at all so okay. why i am telling you because when you do a hearing test you are supposed to do it in a sound proof room so nobody has okay. a sound proof room at home so mm -hmm. you might have the fan noise the ac of your mm -hmm. next door neighbor the dog barking so you will not get a 100% accurate test okay but you will get a average okay mm. so that is one screening you can do and if you find okay. that there's a problem visit a ent mm. surgeon who will check your ears because sometimes mm. you might have other issues also other than a mm. nerve loss you can you mm. could have a say infection in your ear which will need to mm. be treated first that mm. can cause also a problem so you will mm. need that also so once you are diagnosed with a hearing loss if you need a mm. hearing aid you will undergo a, a hearing aid trial where the mm. technician will fit you with different machines and the machine mm. which is most comfortable to you and you can understand speech there's something called a mm. speech discrimination score like you know whether the patient is able to understand speech not mm. just sound mm. accordingly they are diagnosed mm. okay that they mm. have a sensory mm. neural type of hearing loss and they are fitted mm. with a hearing aid and that helps mm. but you have to you know wear the hearing aid regularly that helps in stimulation of the nerves otherwise it doesn't work correct correct okay okay all right and uh, another question that was again uh, you know uh, related to people with ckd who have had the transplant done is there anything that post transplant maybe you know uh, a care or which is related to ent again 
has to be taken uh, especially second important question is i am sure with most of the ckd patients uh, not sure with early stage uh, you know patients but obviously people on dialysis or uh, you know people at a later stage and post transplant try and mention this to any doctor that they, they visit in their history that you know they have this as a condition already right so yes one yeah so one is like post transplant kind of a care and uh, you know that they have to handle that's one and second what is a general guideline that you advise uh, for any ckd patient especially if they are ever visiting to ent to mention you know okay that yeah. so two things okay okay one is post transplant post transplant yeah. a lot of uh, immunosuppressant drugs are on their list so yeah. uh, that that can actually uh, be cause for concern in case they have a history of any kind of infection in the ear nose or throat so a fungal infection is very common when you are on steroids so that's one thing and uh, in this regard mm. also uh, you will have to kind of uh, tell them whether you have had any nephrotoxic and ototoxic drug previously like you know certain mm -hmm. drugs which are given for say certain infections might cause damage to the kidney as also the damage to the ear so the those mm -hmm. drugs might have caused the ckd and then the patient underwent a transplant that could also happen so you have to mention that because you have changed the kidney but you can't change your ears mm. so the history is very important so you have to kind of give a detailed history of what caused your ckd if you know because certain drugs can mm. cause even something like aspirin the malarial mm. drug quinine even uh, you know the chloroquine we were uh, all using for covid mm, 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 in certain mm. cases uh, now they are saying for long covid we have to take the history of how long people have taken chloroquine because people oh, are coming okay. to us yeah because covid has uh, i have written on my blog about this also in long covid classically mm. almost 30% of even asymptomatic patients are having ckd oh that's a shock yes there has been a uh, like multiple studies on long covid and kidney has been affected in even asymptomatic patient and that is why not getting covid is your best bet because 30% yeah. mane it's almost at 6 months they are getting symptoms of all this so you know it's oh. quite serious yes so you have to give all those history whether this person has had any other problems like this also mm. so the previous history is most important even when you have undergone a transplant and mm. uh, sorry you have to tell me the next question i forgot the other question yeah yeah had. so what was uh, i think you've tried and answered both the things in one so and my question guidelines. was like post guidelines. yeah and the typical yeah guidelines so most post transplant guidelines probably which is more specific to ent and preventive as a measure i don't know see what happens post transplant mostly patients because they sort of get a new life altogether <clears throat> at the same time they are equally uh, you know equally very very cautious in terms of everything because they have gone through a lot uh, they they've seen how things uh, are uh, how they have suffered because nobody can uh, really experience their suffering until and unless yes. uh, you know you yourself are, have gone through that uh, knowing that i think they want to take every uh, step uh, everything very very yeah every prevention is what is what is going to be there in mind now coming to something like this which probably due to immunosuppressors or anything if yeah. they develop which i'm sure while post transplant care the physicians the nephrologist they and their treating care. doctors they definitely take care of it but yes. these things again eventually because they are on a high medication over a period of time for a good substantial period of yes. a time rather and eventually those things keep coming down so uh, that's that's where i'm saying that you know what is that uh, sign uh, signal when they should really get into that specific to ent i'm saying specific to ent is nasal bleeding like you have a small okay. cold and you start mm. having bleeds nose bleeds it's very common mm. when you have been on steroids a small cold mm. doesn't go away and you have sinusitis acute mm. sinusitis can cause nasal bleeding chronic sinusitis can cause nasal bleeding somebody who mm. has a history of ckd might be hypertensive even now diabetic even now so mm. on immunosuppressants that chances are higher they might mm. have fungal infections of the mouth they might have recurrent mm. mouth ulcers they might mm. have hearing loss persistent even after mm. transplant because after mm. transplant as i told you the problem of the ear doesn't go away just like mm. you know when your blood sugar is elevated it gets inside all your cells when mm. your you know blood 
urea is elevated it gets yeah. inside your cochlear hair cells you can't hmm. take them out so your hmm. best bet is try to be as healthy as possible hmm. forever and if hmm. unfortunately somebody does develop that hmm. uh, all the diseases you know that cause ckd then they should try to keep it under control and not experiment hmm. with medication you know your doctor hmm. you have to kind of it's a system like you have to trust your patient and the patient hmm. has to trust you because hmm. once you don't have that equilibrium nothing works like mm. you have to trust the process if you experiment with say social media experts and uh, a lot of other diverse medication that you can buy online from amazon then you are going to be in a fix and also mm. you should not experiment with you know something which is totally purely natural because natural can also poison the life out of people because all okay. poisons could be natural too so you have to be very careful post transplant what you are putting inside your body you mm. are thinking it's healthy it might not be healthy so you have mm. to be very careful like you know you have to talk to your doctor before you are experimenting mm. because once your system has a lot of steroids in it which happens after transplant then mm. you have to be very careful for the smallest infection you can't mm. uh, kind of let it happen so that's mm. the thing you can't take a chance you have to be got very it. very careful got it got it so another general question maybe that i see now from the people is about general you know any uh, human being whether is suffering from ckd or not now uh, any ent related issues and especially we do, especially during the pandemic uh, times now uh, things were very difficult and i don't know how many ents were also like you know it was very difficult to even uh, people for to visit and check because they were uh, like you know exposed much and in the yes. initial period people were even doctors were not very sure about the behavior and how yes. things will uh, progress and all whereas now things are slightly better much better but much better. yeah much better yeah so now the point uh, probably the question that people again uh, you know have some of the people is like generally for ent uh, what is the general uh, prevention guideline you know that people any normal person should take it for which i'll tell you i mean specific like is whether it is related to you know people usually have itching you know with the in the ear right so sometimes some people have uh, sinus issues some people have you know issues related to like even kids the snoring issues yeah. okay uh, or uh, you know kids uh, probably at a very early age they have something you know doctors say that there is some issue with the Uh, some bone in the nose which is like more than uh, what you call the normal so yeah, yeah. so there are a couple of uh, issues that revolve around uh, ent right so general guideline in terms of do's don'ts okay uh, for normal people because like you said people self medicate or they go on internet and check certain things and then they do those things and uh, uh, in the pandemic period uh, which i think even doctor suggested about steam and other things those mm. were certainly helpful uh, but other activities like some of the videos went very viral from china somebody was like you know doing taking water from one side and then the water used to come from the other side some treatments like that so there are a lot of experiments actually that people did uh, but since on this right now and since you are there as an ent specialist we would like to really convey uh, this to our now we was also about what guidelines do come from uh, you know and what are the best practices probably in case there is an issue what is the uh, next step that they should take care of especially in a common issues i'm saying you know very okay. common uh, form yeah see first uh, for the covid kind of thing since if you are wearing mask when you are going out and you are maintaining more or less social distance then you have much less chance of catching any of our ent problems you know because okay. the root of entry is through your nose and mouth if you are okay. wearing a mask there's a much less chance of cold much less chance of flu much less chance of covid because i started uh, seeing my patients uh, since march uh, sorry may 2020 during okay. covid a- april was total lockdown i am in a very yeah. small town we had to buy our own uh, n95s and our own mask and mm. our own shields people helped like you know there are lots of Uh, uh neighbors who also help and everything mm, but mm, uh, ppe mm. i could not wear because it's not mm. what shall i say i was i stopped using our ac in our clinic mm, because air mm. conditioning can spread in a mm. closed environment so we stopped mm. using uh, the ac and it's very very hot in west bengal uh, in all the summer months even now we are not using our ac in our clinics uh, at mm. home we are using 
but not in our clinics where there are you know all the doors and windows are always kept open because open mm. air you know the ventilation is much better so mm. i have been using my own uh, n95 that is you know standard n95 with a surgical mm. mask and i use a shield face shield mm. and that is the three things i have used uh, over the last more than one year and touch mm. wood my entire family has been okay my immediate family and my uh, my you know in laws uh, they are all okay we uh, touch wood like you know many of our friends did have covid but mm. my husband is a pediatrician he was very like you know i can't wear a mask because the children will run away you know how can mm. i see a patient with three masks on my face but as a ent surgeon i have been wearing masks say for the last 13 years like whenever i used to like we have to wear a surgical mask many people mm. don't but i used to wear because uh, i personally thought that was the best for me i had a problem with allergies and everything so i thought you know it's best to wear a surgical mask so wearing a mask was not a problem for me personally but my husband went through a very steep learning curve but he managed and even he wears all these three and we have managed to you know make it a discipline that the patients who come to visit us have to wear a mask little kids sometimes can't but the kids are wonderful you know my 9 year old daughter she wears an n95 all the time she goes out we go out to play in open air we mix with the same set of friends so that they are mm. all vaccinated and their kids wear masks mm. and in open yeah. air even if they are opening the mask the air is open like you know barasa yeah. ek field mein ja kar bacche log khelte hain that's the kind mm. of play we do we yeah. avoid small space gatherings mm. strictly we try to do it in a like uh, we have a village home where we take the kids on a sunday say and they play in the open air there is a swing there it's all yeah. very you know we are privileged uh, because i do have a uh, sasural here that's why i have this opportunity to live in a village part time and live in the town part time so i am having the best of both worlds and i think uh, people need to think about that you should not all run away from the villages because you have an opportunity of living uh, in nature and you can be yeah. free we can take off yeah. our mask and i think that's been the biggest uh, boost to my own mental health going out in yeah. nature we started yeah. visiting our village from october uh, till october last year we were not doing anything just you know just the clinic and at home and we used to take a bath three times a day because every time we went out come back yeah, and have yeah. a bath yeah. so yeah. if you take basic precaution of wearing a mask getting vaccinated mixing with the uh, responsible set of friends and mm-hmm. family mm-hmm. then mm-hmm. everybody should be okay because yeah. prevention is your best chance in yeah, all yeah, diseases yeah yeah correct and in the uh, general for the common people that uh, you were to if you can help with something that you know that they should if you have itching of ear yeah itching of yeah. ear and you have a cold the main yeah. uh, thing which helps is a little bit of steam if it doesn't go away with that you have to visit a doctor after 2 mm-hmm. days of steam if your nose doesn't clear you can use a saline nasal drop not something mm. with a xylometazol in because that's one of the most overused and abused medicine people come to me with 2 years of xylometazol in use in the nose what that causes is a rebound nasal obstruction you start snoring mm. more your nose get all dried you can start bleeding there is a problem called rhinitis medicamentosa which happens because of abuse of that nasal drop mm. so it's an otc people think mm. whenever they have a uh, you know cold they can start using it people mm. buy anything from the shop and put it in their ear but there are certain ear drops which can actually if you have a say ear perforation they can cause you to have a hearing problem mm. so mm. you think it's making your ear better it could make it worse and you have no idea of knowing it mm. so Correct. if you have a ear itch which is not going away even with steam or maybe sometimes people also have cold medicines and it's not going away it could be a fungal infection in your ear it could mm. be an acute otitis media it could be a chronic otitis media so if mm. somebody can look into the ear only then you can say ear is the biggest problem ear and nose throat okay. people can see ear mm. and nose people are not able to see and even mm. uh, random medication definitely will make it worse like in mm. ent most of our diseases are chronic disease and my work was in counseling them you know you are supposed to do this so that you don't have to have medicine like mm. certain patients who have say chronic sinusitis i advise them to have steam inhalation twice a day mm. every day so that i can wean them off medications you know mm. so for common people if you don't get better by say 7 days visit a doctor
because nobody mm. can see inside your ear somebody is trying mm. to wash your ear with oil mm. strange medicines it can mm. perforate the eardrum mm. it can be like you know life changing like somebody mm. without a hearing is a big problem yeah it's it, a big problem it's not talked about but old age maximum problem happens because of the hearing and the eyesight like those two mm. are not proper then it's a quality of life becomes very poor mm. and for kids and, also mm, it's very important mm, mm, you have to have yeah. good ear hygiene yeah so at the same time i guess uh, as far as kids are concerned you know basic uh, practice of uh, ensuring that they are all good with hearing yeah. i think that should be done yeah, uh, that's very important also, yeah no it's it's mandatory uh, after 6 yeah. months if your child you you have seen that the child is not getting startle reflex they are not moving their head at the sound mm. of their parents voice or the uh, you know the doorbell you are supposed to get mm. it checked done it's called a bera you can get mm. it done once in 6 months and once at 9 months 6 months it's not diagnostic but it can give mm. you an idea if there is a problem it's called a brain stem evoked response audiometry whether the brain is receiving sound mm. if the brain is not receiving sound that means the child is not hearing and that child cannot speak if you don't okay. hear you can't speak so it goes mm. together so uh, the timeline for children getting best intervention is before 2 years mm. after that till 7 years you have a golden period but after mm. that the speech is severely affected yeah Correct. so get tested on time yeah and about the hearing aids the devices we've been uh, seeing that you know there are a lot of uh, there are lots new... of uh, hearing aid and that mm-hmm. has to be tested basically the technician you can have hearing aids ranging from say 10000 rupees to lakhs of rupees depending on uh, what kind will be suitable for you i do not recommend mm-hmm. any brand as such because it depends mm-hmm. on the patient's purse and yeah, the yeah, patient's yeah. hearing okay yeah. so if they feel comfortable with a particular hearing aid it has to be comfortable it mm-hmm. should not cause any feedback like you know there should be no ringing sound in ear sometimes okay. uh, patients have tinnitus problem that mm-hmm. cannot be cured by a hearing aid but okay. what can be done is the hearing aid is adjusted in such a way so that the mm-hmm. tinnitus is not aggravated mm-hmm. and somebody with a normal hearing if they have tinnitus you will use a tinnitus masker that's mm-hmm. like a headphone which will block mm-hmm. that sound so okay. there are different things for different problems right another thing which is post due to pandemic the work from home you see everybody has plugged in this whole thing and i guess you know that uh, has some i'm sure is there a role this uh, whole yes, headphones and music and thanks to otts and uh, <laughs> series it's, you know are these things dangerous. contributing yes definitely when you using like even i am using uh, i try to listen on a speaker most of the time because uh, and if you are using a plug in like this mm. you have to keep it clean and use it for one person in a family so that you mm. don't share the bacteria share mm-hmm. okay that's one it's better to have over the ear headphones Correct. they Those don't cause as much damage yeah but yeah. i have a problem with that because my ear becomes hot i can't wear oh, it for yeah. long so many people mm. have that problem So yeah, what yeah, I do is, so this thing you have to lower the volume, like mm-hmm. not more than thirty percent of okay. the bar. So the louder you hear, it's a noise, noise trauma. Mm-hmm. It's a problem, and don't use the hard ones. The hard ones mm-hmm. can cause real, you know, injury inside. Got it. For got kids it. especially. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. All right. Wonderful. So now, uh, I mean, last. Uh, like uh, you know some of the some of things because this uh, entire session is about patients with kidney diseases right um, and we have seen that patients uh, you know before they are diagnosed with ckd or because a lot of people don't even know and like you said like hypertension or diabetes are the primary you know they are the ones the primary cause basically you can call them so uh, once they have the chronic kidney disease and then they the whole journey probably surrounding around various other diseases probably uh, due to compromised uh, immune system or any other lot of medication uh, psychological uh, challenges that people go through financial challenges that they go through uh, and then they might have lot of because till now only people who were complaining about some of the issues 
related to anything that is related to ENT to be very specific. Uh, we were not very sure what is the relation between both, right? Uh, because these issues could be very much, but like you've explained that uh, already, you know, patient with uh, CKD, uh, what are possibilities, you know, when it mm -hmm. comes to hearing specifically, uh, I think that is really a wonderful part. Anything uh, uh, on the closing note, you would want to, uh, you know, share your thoughts, uh, words, advice, uh, guidance to CKD patients specifically uh, that they should take care of and in what uh, way, you know, uh, they can probably uh, go and connect at what period and stuff like that. If you can think that will be very helpful. Uh, I think uh, keeping a very positive mindset, mm. whatever mm. happens, very important. is very important because ultimately we have a role to play in this world. Whatever True. disease we have, uh, they are only making us stronger, even if it's mm. causing a lot of suffering. Mm. Uh, all of our lives are, you know, like examples for other people. So even if you mm. have CKD, you can set an example and try to do your best trying Correct. to follow your doctor's advice exercising sleeping not increasing stress because stress yes. can cause all these things to get worse mm. so mental health practices are very important never stop exercising go for Correct. walks go yeah. and garden like if you don't have a garden start a balcony garden do something in nature have a hobby because you know you need to kind of de-stress the life mm. is too stressful and this COVID has shown we really have one life to live. Whatever happens right. in the next life, we have no idea. This is the one we have right now. And uh, have a positive mindset. I think that, that could help. And the masks really work. And I think the vaccines mm. do too. So because Certainly. we got vaccinated and we are still wearing masks and it helps. Yeah, I think that's a, that's a wonderful perspective. Wonderful. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Thank Basu. You. I think uh, your time uh, you spent, uh, you you gave us this time. It's very precious and very valuable insights, I must say. Uh, uh, and uh, I'm sure this is going to help a lot of people. And uh, they're going to probably, especially if we have to really map ENT, CKD, these mm -hmm. uh, two things. I think they have got good information very, on this. Yeah, but very diverse. People will be like, what does uh -huh. CKD have to do with this? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> See, basically, CKD or anything, CKD, I think, seems to be an end result. Uh, most yeah. of the time, it's yeah, all it's end because result. Of, it's, it's an end result. And uh, with that end result, people have to understand. And I think common people, I, I mean, normal healthy living people who probably have no issue, health issues, may not be able to set any context or may not be able to have, see any relation between these two. But I guess it is equally important for them, for all these people. Uh, and the information that you have shared is extremely uh, valuable. Uh, thank, thank you, you so much you. for this. Uh, and to all my, uh, to all the viewers, uh, I would suggest that you can always connect with Dr. Basu. I mean, in, you can go and have yeah more information. I guess you are on Instagram as well. Uh, I'm on Instagram. Twitter also. You're you on Twitter. Yeah, I'm on yes, Twitter. Yes. I'm on Instagram. Yeah, so you yeah. Can, but uh, uh, like, I don't consult on Twitter or Instagram. No, no, obviously. of course not. <laughs> uh, so, no, but uh, right. you can always tag me and ask me questions. Yes, and yes, if yes. It's not of a private nature. I will try to answer. Certainly, certainly, certainly. I think, and uh, the more can be, uh, they can find out more about you on YouTube as well. I guess yeah. that's what yeah. you are certainly there. All right, wonderful. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Again, uh, pleasure connecting. Yeah, I appreciate you so your time, ma'am. See you. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Thanks a lot. Bye. Yeah. Bye.